Hello and welcome to another episode of Hollywood Wargaming. Today we are going to be looking at how to get started in bolt action. And this video is meant to be a sort of buyer's guide for people getting into the hobby. Now, one of the major perks about bolt action is it is one of the more comparably affordable wargames on the market. One that really hits that sweet spot between having a large expansive line of models with good support while also not quite being games workshop expensive. And really, you can get into Bolt Action for under $100. Now, that's being pretty generous. You have to find them in a good time of the year where they have one of their sales going on, or playing relatively smaller games from some of the starter sets that we're going to look at in this video. But really, if you play your cards right, you can have a full 1,000-point army for Bolt Action for around $150, including all the literature and activation dice required with it. And once you get into that $200 range for an army, you can have a nice, comfortable amount of models to field a variety of lists with diverse strategic capabilities. And while I know the word expensive is a subjective term, and $200 may not be something that a, say, college student could afford right now, if you look at this hobby and the time frame it takes to actually assemble and have all those models painted, $200 worth of Warlord Games Bolt Action Miniatures is probably going to take you two to five months to paint, depending on your techniques, skill, and speed. And really when you compare that to most other hobbies, or even other war games within this hobby, that is a pretty affordable number right there. Especially if you're stingent with your savings and shop wisely. It's also worth noting that Warlord Games does host a large amount of sales that pop up throughout the year, and if you're conscious and patient about when and where you buy these models, you can save a lot of money. Things like the Spruce Sale come up and offer a lot of infantry models for 50% off, and there's plenty of other occasions where other things like vehicles or resin kits go on sale through Warlord for 30% or more. It's something you just don't see happen with other premium war games such as Star Wars Legion or Warhammer and Warhammer 40k. But if you're eager to get in the game, you do not need to wait for a sale because there are some great bundles that Warlord offers out of the gates that are going to help you save some money. And once that initial urge to build and paint World War II models and play some games wears off and you're willing to be more patient for the sales, you can wait till then to expand your army even further. But let's go ahead and move along and look at some of the things that you're going to need to get started in bolt action, and how I would recommend a new player to get started. And this video is going to be broken down into sort of two different paths, one being starting as a solo player, beginning with one army for yourself, and the alternative route is going to be buying as a duo, whether you want to have two armies for yourself, or you and a friend are looking to get into the hobby together and split a box set. Alternatively, if you are a parent or someone else looking to buy this as a gift, say for two kids looking to get into painting miniatures together, this duo section of the video is going to pertain to you also. And before we begin looking at what models or kits I recommend you start with, we're going to look at some of the tools and equipment you are going to need to begin playing Bolt Action. These, of course, are going to be the utensils necessary to play the games and interact on the battlefield scenarios that Bolt Action revolves around. But do note that not all of these items need to be bought independently. Some of them will be in some of the box sets I recommend later in this video. It's also worth noting that these must-have items do not include the paints required to paint and assemble the miniatures, and for that I will refer you to my Getting Started mini-series that I posted on this channel. But with no further ado, we will move along and look at the must-have items when beginning bolt action as a solo player. Again, this is if you are looking to start just by yourself with just one army. And on the top of this list we have the Humble Tape Measure. This is something that you are going to need for almost every war game out there, as distance on the battlefield is usually represented and measured using a tape measure. This determines not only the range for your weapons, but also the distance you move, and pretty much serves as the core component of how these models interact on the tabletop. Now, you really don't need any special tape measure here, and I would recommend just buying a cheap $5 one from your local Rite Aid or Home Depot or something like that. They will all suit you just as well, so long as they have a firm, rigid tape for the tape measure itself, i.e. not a tailor tape measure, and are measured in inches. And after that, we are going to need a set of D6 dice. D6 simply meaning a six-sided die. These are the regular die that everybody is familiar with, the same ones you're going to be rolling in craps at the casino, or when you're playing Monopoly. And if you're looking to keep it cheap and quick, 
Go ahead and grab yourself some of the Chessex dice. They are some of the mainstays that you can find in almost every hobby shop, every card game store. They are very common and they are very, very affordable. But if you're anything like me and you have some reverence for that historical army that you're painting, you may be interested in coughing up some extra dough and getting some premium dice. I personally have a pretty vast amount of dice, one for each of my North African campaign armies, and it's quite fun seeing those Desert Rats or Africa Corps logos show up every time you roll a 6 on the tabletop. But that's absolutely not a necessity, and if you're just getting into the hobby and you're not sure whether you're going to like playing or not, go ahead and keep it cheap, get some Chessic dice, and see how much you like actually playing the game before investing into those luxury items. But much like the tape measure, having d6 dice is a core component to wargaming, and these are basically used to represent the randomness events that may occur on the battlefield. And after the d6 dice, we are going to have activation dice. Now these are also d6 die, but they are marked differently, and rather than having pips on each face, they're going to have orders that correlate with the bolt action rules. And these are very much unique to Bolt Action and a lot of Warlord's other games, and tied directly in with the game's activation system. And you really do need a full set of 12 here. I'm not going to go too far out of my way explaining as to why, but just know that it ties directly in with the core mechanics of the rules. And that will move us along to our next item on the list, which is the Bolt Action 2nd Edition Rulebook, which is the most current edition at the time this video is being released. And this is basically going to be your overall rules for the game that explain how you play on the tabletop, and will also include some unit and army rules for the main five factions of Bolt Action. This really is a must-have to understand how the game is played, and it is available in a wide variety of formats, ranging from paperback to hardback to PDF to ebook. All of which vary in price, I think the most expensive being $40 for the hardback, and all of which go on sale relatively frequently, especially the PDF and ebook versions. And after that, I would recommend picking up the Armies of book. Again, the Armies of is of course going to correlate with the nation that you're buying. So if you're starting German, you're going to buy the Armies of Germany book. If you plan on playing Russians, you're going to pick up the Armies of the Soviet Union book, and so on and so on. And while the main rulebook does cover the very basics of these factions, this book is really going to give you a lot of information on those armies, and a ton more flavor and variety of units you're going to be able to field. Now, if you're not really sure as to whether you're going to enjoy bolt action, or if you're not really sure if you're interested in a World War II themed tabletop game, you could probably hold off on the Armies of book and wait until down the road to see if you want to further expand on your army, with some of those more unique and flavorful units. But if you are a diehard World War II fan like myself, you're going to want to buy this book right out of the gate. Fortunately, they're not very expensive, they go on sale very frequently, and there are a lot of starter bundles that will include them with it. And that brings us to our final must-have item, and that is going to be pin markers, or dice that you can use to represent pin markers on the battlefield. Now, pin markers are a core element to the bolt action rule sets, and a mechanic that pretty much dominates the tabletop. And when units are hit, they will need to receive pin markers and need to be indicated as such on the battlefield. Fortunately, a lot of bolt action starter sets do come with the pin markers sprue, which is going to give you these little red blast icons. And these are molded with numbers on them, so you can sort of twist the blast marker like a dial to mark how many pin markers you have on a unit. However, the numbers are very small, they are red so they blend in with the base, and it's difficult to see from afar. So, because of that, I much prefer just using red Chessex dice to represent pin markers, rather than these larger, somewhat obtrusive plastic blast markers. However, I do still have some of these red pin markers that I do use to represent incoming artillery or airstrikes on the battlefield, so they're not totally bunk. It's also worth noting that these pin markers are often bundled with the template and token sprue. And while I do find myself using the template tool quite often, it's definitely not a necessity when you have the tape measure, and I never really find myself using the tokens that come along with that. Still, these are definitely items worth picking up on sprue sale if the box set you're buying for your starter kit don't come with it. But personally, I use some Chessic dice for my pin markers, while I use premium dice for my other rolling. And really, that's all you actually need to get started in bolt action. It's pretty cutthroat, and the activation dice aside, you're not spending too much on items that are exclusive to this game, aside from the literature you need to play it. But what if you're looking to get in this game with two people? Be it you and a friend, you or a sibling, or you as a person who wants to buy enough 
to invite a friend over and host a game with your own models. Well, fortunately, it's pretty much the same scenario, except you're just going to need two sets of activation dice here, one for each player. And I want to emphasize having these activation dice is very essential. However, if you are playing in an insular area or group where it's just you and a few other players, or you plan on hosting the games yourself, you don't need to buy the official Warlord activation dice. The orders are still on a D6 system, and they do have pips that correlate with each of them. The main thing with activation dice is that you just need to have 12 dice per faction that are of the same size and texture. That is because Warlord's activation system relies on you reaching into a bag and pulling out a die with the color of that die determining which player activates a unit. So if you can imagine one player showing up to a game with the official Warlord dice and another player showing up with a much smaller Chessex die, it's simply not going to work with the activation system as you are going to feel which dice you are grabbing. But if you are playing at home in your own company, you could very well grab two different sets of Chessex dice and use those as your activation dice, which is a much more affordable option. But it's definitely something that's not going to mesh well when you show up to a hobby store looking to get a game in. Warlord makes these order dice for a reason. They are a standardized size for all bolt action players. So I highly do recommend just buying the bullet and getting the order die. If you're on a shoestring budget, you can definitely get by by using the Chessex dice. And I suppose I may as well bring up the order dice bags in this section of the video. Warlord does make their own unique dice bags. They are more or less just cloth bags with World War II emblems and the bolt action symbol on it, and sometimes even Warlord symbol on it. And these are very much premium items that I just don't think anyone really needs to buy. They usually come in around $20 each, which I think is massively overpriced for a bag. I mean, at $20, you can buy a bottle of Crown Royal and get the bag and a $7.50 of whiskey with it. So that's where I stand on that. But aside from that extra set of activation dice, I would also recommend getting the Armies of book for both corresponding forces that you have. Again, that's going to allow you to field more unique units for each faction, and will add a lot of flavor to the two forces you have when facing off against each other. But aside from that, everything else can be shared here, provided that you are going to be playing in the same controlled environment with each other. If you plan on splitting a box set with another person, but you think you're going to be playing with other people besides just each other, you may want to get extra things like extra dice, tape measure, pin markers, and maybe even another rulebook so you can both cross-reference the rules when needed. And with all of those essentials finally wrapped up, we can finally go ahead and move along and take a look at some of Warlord's products that I would recommend buying when getting started in bolt action. And to begin doing so, we are going to take a look at some of the individual starter sets that a single player would buy for themselves when getting started in the game. And these are the Get Started with Bolt Action bundles, of which they have almost every faction in the game, including all of their sub-factions, for example, British paratroopers within the British Army. And really, what you're going to get out of each of these boxes is going to be a box of infantry, which will allow you to assemble on average 30 men, along with the support team that varies for each box sets, but most importantly, you are going to be getting all the literature you need for that army, including the Armies of book and the Bolt Action 2nd Edition rulebook. Along with this, you will be getting a set of 12 activation dice, and then a set of pin markers. And most of these sets are going to come in at just 88 US dollars. And referring back to that must-have list, that's going to knock out four of the six items that you need to play Bolt Action, not including the models themselves. And when you take into consideration that most of these infantry box sets are going to be about $45, and most of these support weapon teams are going to be about $15, you're basically getting a rulebook and the armies of book here for free. Which I think is a big deal for wargaming bundles, because consumers getting into the hobby really don't want to be spending a bunch of money on utensils and literature for a game that they're not really sure if they're going to be playing in the long run. Bundling these things in with model sets is a great way to get people into the hobby and justify spending in that $80 range when doing so. But really, I think one of the main perks with these box sets is that you're getting the Armies of book and a full set of order dice. As I stated previously in this video, you are going to need a full set of 12 if you want to play bolt action seriously in the long run. And when we move along to look at some of the starter sets that Warlord Games makes, I think one of their biggest flaws is not providing you with enough order dice. 
But before we move along to look at those, I do want to give you a little bit more advice on these getting started sets. And my first tip is going to really tie in with the nature of special weapons in bolt action. Because with these box sets, you are going to notice that some of them come with HQ squads, medium machine gun squads, medium mortar squads, or other special weapons like flamethrowers and snipers. And unfortunately in bolt action, those HQ blister packs, along with the medium machine gun teams, just aren't very useful extra kits to have. And there's a couple of reasons for that. For the HQ, you don't really need to buy an officer model, as most sprues come with a peaked cap head on them, and you can just make an officer out of the plastic kit there. These kits usually also come with radio operators and medics, which just really aren't the most useful models to have around. And while that is going to allow you to free up some more bodies in your infantry box that you have there, you really are just going to get some more utility out of a mortar or a sniper or a flamethrower. And probably the least desirable special weapons unit that you're going to get here is going to be the medium machine gun team. And that's not only because medium machine guns are very lackluster in bolt action, but that's also because you can just build machine gun teams out of the basic infantry box sets, or do what I do and just take a light machine gunner and put two loaders next to them for a medium machine gun team. They're just not super desirable. And inevitably, some of these get started with bolt action bundles are going to be a little bit better than the others based on which special weapons upgrade team they come with them. But if you're really hell-bent on getting something like British Airborne, and that's the faction you have your heart set on playing, don't let the fact that this bundle comes with an HQ squad deter you from buying it. But generally speaking, having that mortar or special weapons team is going to be better than getting an HQ or medium machine gun team. After that, I want to talk about the reinforcement sets that Warlord makes. And these are basically meant to be follow-up sets or accessory sets that you buy alongside with these getting started kits. But unfortunately, for the most part, these kits usually aren't worth it. There are some decent ones like the US Army reinforcement sets, but most of them you're only going to be getting about a $5 to $10 value on it, and they're going to have you locked into a certain variety of vehicles, which you may or may not be interested in. On top of that, they are usually going to be offering you those less desirable HQ and medium machine gun teams, which I think a lot of people are going to be avoiding those initial sets to begin with. It's kind of the same conundrum with those support group boxes that Warlord sells, where you're basically getting a buy two, get one half off, but the one you're getting half off isn't really something that you want or need. So for the most part, I think these getting started reinforcements box sets can be skipped by most players, but I think they are worth at least taking a look at, and if all of the items in the bundle are something that you are interested in, it may be worth saving a few bucks on it, though absolutely not something completely necessary. But let's say you're looking to get into bolt action with either a friend or sibling, and you guys want to go half on a starter set. Well, Warlord Games does make a lot of quote-unquote starter sets or battle sets that come with two opposing armies. Unfortunately, most of these sets lack the literature and tools included in them for me to really consider them a valid starting point into the game. On top of that, a lot of them aren't even really that good of bundles. And I've always found it a bit strange that Warlord has relatively affordable prices that go on sale very frequently, but their huge box sets don't really offer that much in terms of savings and value. Even box sets in the $300 to $400 range, like the Stalingrad set, don't even reach the 25% bargain value mark, something that makes other games like Star Wars Legion and even Warhammer 40k look generous. However, I do think they are starting to get better with it, and when we look at the two starter sets recommended in this video, the first and more recent of which is a pretty good bargain. And that is going to be the El Alamein battle set, coming in at 128 US dollars. This is going to be a mid-war box set, centered around the climactic battle that more or less ended the North African campaign and marked a turning point in the war for the Allies. And in this box set, you are going to be getting the Bolt Action 2nd Edition rulebook, along with the Western Desert Campaign rulebook. And the Western Desert Campaign book is an absolutely fantastic campaign book, one that gives you a ton of unique scenarios, unique lists, and even new units to play with both factions. It's going to give you a ton of more flavorful options that's going to make that mid-war period feel less constricted. You're also going to be getting two boxes of infantry, one for the Africa Corps and one for the British 8th Army. This is going to grant you 30 infantry models for each side, giving you a nice balanced infantry force to kick off both of your armies. But the Germans are going to get a slight leg up here with a Rommel exclusive model that comes in the box sets, 
which you will likely be using as your commanding officer. After that, you not only get a set of pin markers, but also the template and tokens, along with an MDF piece of terrain from Sarissa, several D6 dice, and four order dice for each faction. And while the terrain and D6 dice are a nice addition in the box set, they're not adding a whole lot of value. The building's nice if you plan on getting more of the Sarissa production line, and it might be enough terrain for a small 250 point game on a smaller size table, but it's definitely not the centerpiece of this box set. And then we also have the four order die, which is just again something that really kills the value of these box sets for me. I would love to recommend these box sets, but the fact that you're going to need to go out and spend $25 down the road on a new set of activation dice is something that really tarnishes their overall value to me. But if you're looking to try the game out with some small skirmish scenarios with a friend, this is definitely a good way to get going. And something that adds a little bit of value to this box set is the fact that Warlord makes an Africa Corps and British 8th Army starter armies that are both fantastic bundles in their own right. So if you want to dip your toes in the game and then see if you want to expand your armies from there, you can both buy this box set and then buy the respective starter armies, although it is worth noting that those do come in at $120 each, and do not include any more extra rules books or dice. But overall, I think this is a nice way to dip your toes into bolt action, if you and a friend are looking to give it a spin, and spend around $75 each. However, I will make note that this is a mid-war themed box set, which is going to restrict you on some of the models that you can collect, especially when it comes to later war vehicles such as the Churchill Crocodile, or some of those big cat panzers such as the Panther or King Tiger. However, I don't think that's a major drawback, and if you and a fellow player kind of confine yourself to that early war period, you'll find that it's a pretty balanced and refreshing way to play the game. And your battles aren't going to be determined by how well that 500 point mega tank does. But aside from the El Alamein starter set, which I would recommend if you're going the duos routes, we do also have the Band of Brothers starter set, which is going to come in at $112 MSRP. And I already did an entire video on how to assemble this box set, because it's one that a lot of players start off with, and very quickly realize that you do not get a lot of models to work with, and it is very difficult to build balanced even forces for you and your opponent to face off against just using the contents of this box. And that's really the main issue with this as a starter set for me, as you're only going to have four sprues of US infantry and two sprues of German infantry to get started with. That is a very limited amount of infantry, and it's really not going to constitute for a core of your army for you to build off of. You really are going to need to buy more infantry here, just like you're going to need to buy more activation dice. And with both of those things combined, I really do think the Band of Brothers is very much lacking in the bargain department even more so than the El Alamein sets. However, this is an older box set, and it does go on sale pretty frequently, and if you can find it in the $80 range, it is very much an affordable way to get into the hobby. But it is worth noting that this box set does get a quick reference rule sheet, which is nice when you're starting off, because one player can hold on to the rule book, while the other holds on to the quick reference sheet, and both of you can look down and glance at these papers, which is going to help you grasp the game on the fly. Not as good as outright having two rule books, but definitely a bonus. But there is also a subtle perk in having this box set contain such few models, and that means if you're just getting into the hobby, you're going to have a very manageable amount of miniatures to paint and assemble. And this is really one of the main reasons I absolutely would never recommend a starter set like the Stalingrad battle set to new players, because it's very easy for all those models to become overwhelming, especially when you open the box all at once, and that's how you end up with a big plastic pile of shame. With only a few sprues of infantry, it's going to allow you to get more attached to these models as you assemble and paint them, and work on them in a very manageable dosage. So if you're looking to get into bolt action with the bare, bare minimum, and you really have no experience in wargaming and don't really know if you and your friend are going to really enjoy it or not, this might be the route to go. But I definitely wouldn't recommend picking this up at full MSRP, as the extra $16 you would spend on the El Alamein box set is going to give you a lot more models and balanced forces to work with. So overall, what do I think is the best route into bolt action? Well, regardless as to whether you're starting with a friend or not, I would honestly recommend avoiding the box sets and sticking with the get started with bolt action sets. These are going to be the army-specific bundles that are going to knock out more of those must-have items. 
And unless you're playing with a very, very close wargaming buddy, a roommate, or a sibling, I think it is important to have your own literature for these games. On top of that, I do believe the armies of books are something that you're going to need to buy at one point or another for your faction, and being able to get those order dice without having to actually hawk up the $25 for them is a huge perk in my opinion. And with that infantry box set and extra support teams, you really are going to have a nice amount of models that will likely be able to reach a 350 to 500 point list. One that you will comfortably be able to bring into a hobby shop and match up against another player who's interested in those low point games. And really, from there, you can expand comfortably as you wish. After that, I would highly recommend picking up a support team or weapons that you did not have in the box set, for example, if you didn't get the Sniper or Flamethrower, I would recommend grabbing those guys. Or if you didn't get the Medium Mortar, I would recommend picking up that. Beyond that, I would also recommend picking up perhaps an Anti-Tank Gun team, or perhaps even a Howitzer team. This is going to add a little more backbone and allow you to fill out that artillery slot in your reinforced platoon. And once you're comfortable moving along from that, I would definitely recommend investing in a transport and a tank of your choice. Not particularly in that order but whichever one you feel like your list needs the most. And at around the $175 range, this should give you a nice, comprehensive 1,000-point list with some flexible options within it. And if you were looking to be a little more frugal, I would say skip over the transport and the medium anti-tank or howitzer team, which should save you about $40. And alternatively, if you were looking to expand your infantry selection, you could always buy another infantry box set with that $40. There really is a lot of ways to go here. This is just a sort of basic building block for the backbone of a thousand point army. And ultimately, if you're not sure as to whether you're going to like bolt action or not, I think the getting started set is a relatively affordable start collecting comparison that is also going to serve you better down the road if you do decide to commit to bolt action. And while something like the Band of Brothers set is a great way to dip your toes into the game, I have seen other players get a little bit burned by it, and end up spending another $70 on an infantry box set and set of order dice, because the starter set just didn't come with a sufficient amount. I know I'm pretty cynical about those box sets, and a lot of people have fond memories of getting into the hobby with them, but I think they're just a little bit underwhelming overall compared to how great the rest of Warlord's prices, especially their sales, often are. That being said, I do remember being a 10-year-old and opening Warhammer stuff and playing it against my brother, and I would absolutely adore getting that Band of Brothers set and cracking it open and playing against him with it. So at the end of the day, don't let me tell you what to do or what is the right or wrong way to get into bolt action. This is just my personal recommendation, one that you absolutely do not have to follow verbatim. And if I'm being totally honest, that's not even how I got into bolt action. I started off by buying just one of the Africa Corps infantry box sets to see if I liked the models. So this is by no means an ultimatum. Again, just a suggestion on how to affordably get into the hobby without over or under investing in it. But if you guys are listening to this video and you already play bolt action, please leave a comment below explaining how you got into bolt action, what is a viable way that you think new players can start, and if you are new to the game or curious and interested in getting started in bolt action, feel free to leave a comment and ask any question you want. I try to reply to as many constructive comments as I can on this channel. And like I've said many times before, I want this channel to be a sort of community resource. One that players can be directed to when seeking guidance or information on different topics. And that's not just guidance from me but community and community feedback as a whole. So I encourage all players, new or old, to leave some comments and information and experiences they have in the comments section below. But as always, if you like this video, go ahead and leave a like. If you want to see more content like this, go ahead and hit subscribe, consider turning on notifications, and until next time, take care.